All right, so we're back inside working. Got three coats of spackle on. Probably gonna do a little sanding today and do one more coat touch up spackle. But I did the other video, self level on the floor, four bags. It was still pretty bad, so on Friday, we poured two more bags, so there's six 50 pound bags in this little tiny bathroom. That's how bad the floor was. But now it looks pretty good. Let me turn that light off. See if that looks better. Man, there's some kind of glare. Well, it's a lot better than it was. <laughs> so I set a goal we'll be able to return this bathroom to her by Friday. This is Monday. So on Friday, we poured these two bags. I'll show you the clip now. All right, so this corner back here by the radiator is the low spot. So I'm going to pour it air and let it go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, it's part of the job. Same. Because you got to deal with the fungus. Tool. What's up, kid? You good? Oh, oh dear. Computer problem? Oh dear. Oh, 
hard so I got the dust out. Now it's time to do another coat of spackle. Try to get this nice before I paint. I gotta prime it and I'm gonna coat it twice. If you notice I got the green board on the wall. The mold resistant. And on the ceiling I got the white drywall. That's because that's 5 8 And that's because there's an attic up there. And it's not a finished attic so less chance of someone coming through it with 5 8 I got plenty of screws in it. All right, let's get this back on. So this should be it, number four. Depends on how smooth you get it. Take your time with it. There's no rush. Thankfully, I work for myself. I don't have someone screaming at me to hurry up because they didn't charge enough. That's never good working for somebody like that. I mean, that's your job, bud. Learn how to charge. You gotta know the work. You gotta know how to charge. Don't scream at me. <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I left my last company. Nothing but a crybaby he was. I'm not making no money. I'm not making enough money. I didn't charge enough. Money. That sounds like a personal problem. We still got to try to do the job right. Doesn't matter what you charge. That's how you learn. That's how you learn how to charge. You lose money sometimes. It's all part of the gig. Get this one job I was doing for him. He charged a lady $9,500 to go in the back of her house and caulk a joint. It's just a joint about 30 foot high. Problem is there's an awning. It's one of them cheesy awnings. You can't get up there and walk on it in order to do the caulking. So we had to build a little scaffold under it, put some foam and some plywood, squish it up against it. Then on top of it, put more foam and more plywood. Then we could walk on that and do the caulking. It took us 45 minutes, me and this other dude. He charged her 90, she came out and showed me the paper. I'm not even supposed to be seeing that. You know, it was a big million dollar company. I'm not supposed to be seeing none of that, just do the job. And she's crying to me about the money. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to call my office. So I called the office, they dropped it down to 6,500. She's still upset. She's still upset because we were there 45 minutes. Well, first of, first of all, he never told me to milk the job. And even if he did, I still wouldn't have. You know, if you want somebody to milk the job, you're going to want to tell them. And you're going to want to have some a scumbag employee that will play ball with you. Me, I wouldn't. That's one of the reasons why I left. So I don't know what he wound up charging her, but I'm sure it was too much. So yeah, he got mad at me. He said, you got the job done too. It was one of the only companies I ever worked for where I used to get in trouble for actually getting the job done. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane what goes on in this world. People don't realize they're gonna have to answer for all that. We're all gonna have to answer for what we do. job the job the job wouldn't charge enough wouldn't do the job right would do work that didn't need to be done overcharging people I just got sick of it it's time to go you know, 
went out on my own. And I've been doing my own thing ever since. Thank God, yeah, I've been getting all this work coming my way without advertising, just word of mouth. Because of that, I try to do a good job. Now, if she was to get somebody to come in here and do the spackling, then I have to get somebody different to do the painting. Nobody seems to care. See, I care because I gotta do everything. I'm gonna be finishing. So, I'm gonna do my best to do the job right. Whoever does the spackling should have to also do the sanding. Because if he does a crap job with the spackling, it's not fair if somebody else has to sand for three hours. I mean, it didn't take me very long, or five minutes, to do that sanding in here. You get the wrong person, you'll be in here for hours sanding. I learned that lesson. I mean, we all start somewhere. I started out doing sloppy spackling too. And then you start to figure it out. Hmm. Just bump that. So that leaves a little divot. You gotta fix it. We're gonna be coating spackle again. corners are always tough because you did the top and now when you're doing the bottom you're digging back into the top so sometimes that causes problems you just got to do the best you can take your time try to do it nice no need to rush because some dude sits in the truck all day doesn't know how to charge telling you you got to rush do the job wrong I don't think I'll ever go back to work for someone else again. I worked for multiple people like that over the years. It's just not worth it. Especially if you care about what you're doing. You can't go working for somebody that's only worried about cashing a check. Doesn't take any pride in his work.
See this door here we bought? It says it's pre-primed. See this? See the shine? I don't know if you can see it. That's no good. You know? I don't know if somebody already bought this and painted it. Then they reprimed it to try to resell it. I don't know what's going on with it. Why am I seeing shiny? Primer's not shiny. So yeah, you do have to reprime these doors. You gotta sand it and prime it. Don't go by what they did. Looks like crap. I've been noticing that a lot with doors. Whoever's making these doors. You better learn how to get some quality control or something. I tried to install a storm door for a friend yesterday. What a horrible door. I had to take it all back down. Take it back. Of course, they got nothing in stock, so I couldn't get another one. What are you going to do? bathroom done by Friday. Just give me a shot of spackle. There's gonna be some light sanding tomorrow. Try to get it as flat as possible. It'll be less sanding. Another spot up there I missed. It's alright, I gotta sand it anyway. But most of it's pretty good. Nice and flat. I'm not too concerned with this right here because trim's gonna go here around the door. But I got everywhere else. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be able to sand this. All right, so it's Tuesday. I was hoping to be able to sand this today and paint, but unfortunately it's still wet. This corner too. So I won't be doing that today. So instead, let's do the floor. We use the same tile and take it straight in. Let's get it.
baseboard goes there. This way if the tile ever needs to be changed, you can get it out without removing the baseboard. Got the mallet. Party night.